The management of patients who have advanced stage metastatic ovarian cancer really hinges on systemic treatment. In the context of disease recurrence, what we've clearly established is that with each subsequent line of therapy, the disease-free interval progressively shortens. So when patients have their initial primary treatment and have a remission, and that remission is followed by a recurrence, that subsequent recurrence is usually a period of time shorter than what we achieve at primary systemic treatment. So prognostically, the goal of therapy is to reestablish disease remission with an intent to keep the disease in remission for as long as possible, preserving platinum sensitivity so that if patients develop a subsequent re relapse, there are greater opportunities for therapeutic intervention. Cure may not be anticipated in this setting, although thankfully with the evolution of our treatment strategies, particularly in BRCA mutated patients, that may change in the future. Nonetheless, in this setting, the goal is to achieve an acceptable quality of life while subsequently and in parallel getting these patients to achieve a remission. Molecular testing is emerging as a really important part of anti-cancer therapy across disease sites. Specifically in the ovarian cancer arena, we have known for uh, several years now the importance of evaluating for germline BRCA alterations. This is really quite important both for patients with respect to prognosis and assessment of response, but also very important so that family members can be evaluated for also having a genetic aberration in BRCA1 or BRCA2 so that they can have an early risk-reducing surgical intervention, which could be life-saving by preventing cancer altogether. What we also know is that if we identify a BRCA mutation in patients with ovarian cancer, if that's germline, inherited, or somatic in the tumor, those patients in the front line would be eligible for maintenance PARP therapy based on the SOLA1 clinical trial exploring Olaparib as a maintenance monotherapy, which showed a really significant improvement in median progression-free survival, a 70% risk in the reduction of disease progression in that setting. So germline testing is incredibly important both for the patient and the family, uh, potential family members. And somatic testing of the tumor is equally important because we know that germline testing does not capture all of the BRCA mutations, that uh, five to 7% of patients may have a somatic BRCA mutation, meaning in the tumor or acquired rather than inherited. And we wanna capture those patients as well because we know from studies like Ariel 2 that those patients with a somatic or a germline BRCA mutation respond equally well to PARP inhibition. And in addition, we expand the molecular assessments beyond BRCA. As many of you are aware, BRCA are a member of a family of genes that are uh, important for DNA repair or homologous uh, recombination. And when there is an abnormality in a, any member of these family of genes, you can develop something called homologous recombination deficiency, which we are uh, learning based on both prior studies and recently published clinical trials is uh, informative potentially about the magnitude of response a patient may achieve with a PARP inhibitor, both in the frontline setting or in the platinum sensitive recurrent setting as maintenance strategies. The timing of molecular testing for patients with ovarian cancer is uh, important and relevant. In the frontline, I test all of my patients for both germline BRCA mutations. I also evaluate somatic BRCA aberrations. And thankfully now we have molecular testing paradigms that allow us to do both of those in panel testing. So we can get a germline assessment of the BRCA status, exclude hereditary breast ovarian cancer syndrome, in parallel evaluate the tumor to determine whether or not there is a somatic BRCA alteration, but also look at other family members in the homologous recombination pathway, RAD51C or RAD51D, for example, or potentially alternate actionable mutations. And this also gives me the assessment of HRD, homologous recombination, and an LOH score. And I do this for my patients, the germline assessment, the somatic assessment, and the loss of heterozygosity or homologous recombination assessment in the frontline setting. The germline assessment does not need to repeat, uh, be repeated because that will not change over time. But certainly if patients develop disease recurrence, I'm a proponent, I advocate for resampling of tumor if it can safely be done with limited risk because we know that there can be an evolution in the tumor genomics over time with exposure to prior therapy. So by 
biopsying at the time of recurrence, we can send a contemporary sample, get that data back, and that will hopefully inform treatment based on the disease that's present at that time. 